welcome. The Nigerian Senate on Tuesday screened the candidates selected to become ministers in Africa's most populous country. President Muhammadu Buhari, after four months of taking over power, sent a list of persons that will man ministries under his administration to the Senate in two batches within the space of six days. The Nigerian constitution requires at least one minister to be named from each of the 36 states of the federation. Only 10 nominees were screened by the Senate on Tuesday. There are Udoma Udoma, Kayode Fayami, Audu Ogbe, Ogbunaya Onu, Osage On Ed Hanire, Abdurrahman Dambazao, and the others are Lai Mohammed, Amina Mohammed, Sulaiman Adams, Ibrahim Jibril, as uh, uh, of course, that's 10. Now, others to be screened on Wednesday and Thursday would, well, would include not Udo Udoma now. Um, there are others now who will be screened on Wednesday and Thursday. We just wait and see how that exercise would uh, go. There has to be consistency. We have to, ahead of time, let people know what our plans are because what investors want is consistency. They don't like chopping and changing. You must tell them what your plans are, you must listen to them, and you must make adjustments to accommodate investment. Our Senator Udo Udoma, who is, of course, a ministerial nominee, and, of course, he was screened by the Senate today. Now, Nigeria Senate President Bukola Saraki on Tuesday read out the names of the second batch of ministerial nominees sent in by President Muhammad Buhari uh, at uh, pl as plenary began actually. The second batch of President Buhari's ministerial nominee arrived at the Senate on Monday. The president had on Thursday, September 30th, sent the first batch, which comprised 21 names. 16 names are on the second batch. The names include Kadijatu Buka Abba Ibrahim, uh, this Claudius Omoleye Daramola, Professor Anthony Omoka, Jeffrey Onyema, Brigadier General M. M. Dan Ali, retired, Barrister James E. Ocholi, Zainab uh, Shamsuna Ahmed, Okechuku Enelama, Mohamedou Bello, Mustafa Baba Shesuri, Ms. Aisha Abubakar, Heineken Lokboberi, Adamo Adamo, Professor Isaac Ad Adewale, and uh, Pastor Usani Usani Uguru. And last but not the least is Abubakar Buhari Bawa. Now, the election petition tribunal sitting in Ilori, the Kwara state capital in north central Nigeria, has upheld the election of Senate President Bukola Saraki as the duly elected senator representing Kwara central constituency. The Senate president on Tuesday shared the news on his social media accounts. The three man tribunal is led by Justice Josiah Majebi. This, of course, that tribunal now dismissed the petition filed by the People's Democratic Party's candidate. Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak on the ground that it lacked merit. Adopting his final written address, counsel to Saraki Malam Yusuf uh, Ali asked the tribunal to dismiss the petition, saying the petitioner failed to prove his case. Ali said a forensic report tendered in evidence was dated March 28, 2014, a year before the election was conducted. The Nigerian police on Tuesday in Abuja arrested two suspects in connection with the October 2nd bombings in Nanya and Kujé, Abuja, the Nigerian Federal Capital Territory. 20 persons died and 21 others were injured in the blast in the two satellite towns. Inspector General of Police Solomon Arase, who confirmed the arrest at the conference of senior police officers, said that the suspects aged 25 and 27 were from Kogi State in North Central Nigeria. The All Progressives Congress has condemned the assassination of the margin director of the Leki Free Trade Zone, Tajuddin Dishu, and three other people in the Beju Leki area of Lagos State, Southwest Nigeria, while on official duty. The Lagos State chapter of the APC described the murders inhuman, beastly, and barbaric, and urged the security agencies to ensure that the perpetrators and their sponsors are punished in a release in Lagos signed by the Lagos State Publicity Secretary of the APC, Joe Bope. The party said the killing of Dishu posed a grave danger to the effort to develop the state and country and said the act was perpetrated by those intent on constituting quarks in the wheel of progress 
in Lagos and Nigeria. On Monday, Lagos State Governor Akimumi Ambodi ordered the Lagos State Police Command to fish out the killers of Dishu, who was killed in a land fracker in Okurae community near Ibejuleki, Lagos. The State Police Commissioner Fatai Ooseini said 10 persons have been arrested in connection with the killing of uh, the late MD. Nigeria Secret Police Department of State Services has paraded two persons. It says are part of those who kidnapped former secretary to the government of the Federation and former minister of uh, finance, Olufalae, last month in Akure, southwest Nigeria. The DSS says its men arrested Abdullahi Usman and Babao Kato, uh, Babao Kato, I should say, October 5th in the Lokoja in Lokoja, the Kogi state capital in north central Nigeria, and that both men have confessed to the crime, citing cash crunch in the face of the Salah celebration as a motivating factor. Falai was abducted at his Ilado farm in Akure, the Undo state capital, September the 21st. He regained his freedom three days later after his family paid a ransom for his release. A DSS personnel, Abdullahi Garba, who addressed newsmen, revealed that a ransom of 5 million naira was paid to secure the release of the former Minister of Finance. First September 2015, abducted by armed men on his farm, located in Idaro village, Akure, in Ondo State. Even though he has been released by his abductors, who collected the sum of 5 million naira as ransom, Two of the abductors were arrested by the service on 5th October 2015 at J Zebra Hotel along the Naja Road, local Jaco District. The duo arrested include Abdullahi Usman, also known as Kadri, Babauro Kato. The service wishes to state that the abductors were mere criminals. Investigations have further revealed that their action was not targeted at Falai as a statesman and prominent Yoruba leader. Nigerians are therefore enjoined to live peacefully with one another and shun attempts by mischief makers to give this unfortunate incident an ethnic or any other coloration and use same to cause disaffection among the populace. The British, gov the British government has pledged to support Nigeria's efforts towards ensuring stability and development with a commitment worth 65 billion naira. The country's minister for Africa, Grant Sharp, said on arrival in Abuja on his maiden visit to Nigeria that the two countries would work together to increase the nation's prosperity in the areas of trade and security. He said the UK government would provide a comprehensive package of support to Nigeria by expanding military training and intelligence cooperation. According to him, the UK would also assist Nigeria on anti-corruption capacity building and investigative support and an annual development program worth £218 million. He said the country would also contribute to the increasing prosperity at the heart of a thriving trade relationship worth £6.1 billion per year. That's about 1.8 trillion naira. The minister said he was determined to ensure that Britain builds on its close relationship with Nigeria by sharing its skills, knowledge and expertise of developmental issues. The president and chairman of council of the Nigerian Institute of Management, Dr. Nelson Uwaga, has urged civil servants in the country to shun corruption as well as other forms of social vices in their workplace in their workplaces as this pose serious threats to efforts aimed at uh, setting Nigeria on the path to greatness. Uwaga, who made this charge in Abuja at the 2015 annual National Management Conference, called for a resolve to bring discipline and integrity back to the workplace. He said there's every need to train and retrain the Nigerian workers, arguing that such training would have a ripple effect on the economy and drive the aggregates of natural national development. Now, Deputy Governor of Oshun State Grace, Titi Laoye Tomori, who was also at the event, lauded President Buhari for his change mantra, which has placed the country on a better pedestal. That's according to her, adding that same has been replicated in her home state, of which, of which is uh, the school feeding program. If we do away with corruption, in, because that is the canker one 
that is really eating up the country and we show discipline and integrity in all we do, then I can tell you that there is no way we shall not be up there like any of the developed countries. To the glory of God, we had started with the repositioning of the state of Oshun since uh, 2010 that we came on board. And I'm grateful to God that some of the giant achievements of my dynamic governor are so visible that even the federal government is replicating some of the major projects of Oshun all over Nigeria. For an instance, the school feeding program. The governor rebranded it and ensured that all kids in the elementary school in the state are fed with balanced diet. And I'm quite thrilled to know that the present government has adopted this project and is going to be replicated over all over Nigeria. And this will enable most of our children that had been out of school to be back to school and live a healthy life. Well, we'll take a short break and news now will be right back. Hello, you welcome. You watch the funny white man show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show in Africa. Funny you white man. For funny white man. Funny white man. But this way you talk, you too much. Give me five thousand man that you. Too much. So you get it like, when she move along the street, ah, yeah, me should like that. I'm going girl. You know, my own people. Ah, actually, yeah, fine. It's fun. I enjoy it, and I'm one of those very few. I'm forever taking it personal. I will listen one hundred and sixty million Nigerians are corrupt. How? I brother, I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth, and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months. You know how we do, how we turn up. <laughs> we do the way you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you welcome. You're watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, they will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. Welcome back. Nigeria Central Bank strengthened its exchange rate peg slightly to 196.98 Naira against the dollar on the interbank market on Monday from 197 it set last week. Traders said the regulator sent a message announcing the adjustment, which is the eighth since uh, the bank introduced tight currency controls in February. The bank has resisted calls to further devalue the Naira in the face of a plunge in vital L revenues. It devalued the currency last November and later packed the exchange rate in another de facto devaluation. It instead resorted to rationing dollar supply by restricting access to hard currency for import of setting items, frustrating businesses. Vice President Yomi Oshimbajo has said Africa's biggest economy will keep the currency restrictions for now to preserve the country's foreign reserves but will eventually relax them. Oil prices pegged on light bagging, hotting on Tuesday with gains capped by a report from the International Energy Agency forecasting a global supply glut would last through 2016. Oil prices dropped more than 5% on Monday on news of higher output by the organization of the petroleum exporting countries and on expectations of higher U.S. crude stockpiles. Global benchmark crude was up 40 cents a barrel at $50.26 on Tuesday as traders bought back into the market after the contract dropped $2.79 in the previous session. U.S. crude was up 40, 40 cents at $47.50 after settling down at $2.53. Uh, a drop in oil prices because of abundant supply to close to half the level of a year ago has led to a downgrade in supply forecast from countries outside OPEC, such as the United States of America. 
Now, the Dutch Safety Board has said that the Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 crashed as a result of Russian-made Bok missile. The report states that, states that the missile hit the front left of the plane, causing other parts to break off. It does not say who fired the missile, but says airspace over eastern Ukraine should have been, a, should have been closed, actually. The plane flying from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur crashed in rebel-held eastern Ukraine July 17, 2014, at the height of the conflict between government troops and the pro-Russian separatists. Among the victims were nine, 196 Dutch nationals and 10 Britons. At least three Israelis have been killed and many injured in shooting and stabbing attacks in Jerusalem and central Israel, Israeli police say. Two were killed and 16 others were wounded when two assailants opened fire and stabbed passengers on a bus in Jerusalem. Another died in a vehicle and knife attack elsewhere in the city. Near daily stabbings by Palestinians have left dozens of Israelis dead and wounded over the past fortnight. Now several attackers and at least 17 other Palestinians have been killed in the upsurge of violence. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu still or will convene an emergency session of the Security Cabinet on Tuesday afternoon to discuss the surge in violence. To sports now, Real Madrid and Portugal legend Cristiano Ronaldo has been awarded the Golden Shoe for a record fourth time after scoring 48 goals in the 2014-2015 La Liga season. Ronaldo was presented with the award in a ceremony on Tuesday after finishing ahead of rival Lionel Messi, who scored 43 goals. He also overtakes the Barcelona forward as the player with the most Golden Boots award after picking up the award on three previous occasions. Uh, Twice, of course, with Real Madrid and once with Manchester United. Speaking after receiving the award, the Portuguese insisted that he is not satisfied with his recent accolades, suggesting that he wants to become the only player to win the Golden Boot more than four times. Ronaldo also paid tributes to his teammates for helping him on the way to the record fourth Golden Shoe. His remarkable goal-scoring record was recently commended by, the, by Madrid, of course, with a ceremony. Uh, dedicated to the forward after he overtook club legend Raul as the club's all-time top goal scorer. Well, that's it on News Now. We thank you very much for watching. Continue to stay tuned to TV360.